Hi, this is Shubham Tiwari. Hi, this is Langal. Welcome to the Sales Panel Podcast, where we highlight the journeys and open up the playbooks of thought leaders from the B two B world. Tune in for all the things on data driven marketing, product led growth, and customer intelligence. Our guest today is one of the most creative video content evangelists on LinkedIn. He's helping businesses bring their brand and story to life with a very simple message that your video content should be a twenty four seven sales rep for your business. He's a pretty big, uh, uh, you know, pasta authority on content marketing, video editing, and LinkedIn training. Yes, we are talking about the founder and CEO of Impex Marketing, Alex Sheridan. Welcome to Sales Panel. Hey guys, happy to be here. Appreciate you having me. We are so grateful to have you. So let's start with Impex Marketing. Can you tell us more about it and your role in it? Yeah, in a nutshell, what we do at Impex Marketing is help people build a brand in demand and attract their dream clients through video content. So we help them create a strategy for that, and that's part consulting, coaching, training, and then we help them actually implement that with video editing and some social media management. And so basically, what happens is your video content ends up being your twenty four seven sales rep for your company. Great. So um, we see that uh, video content is being used mostly by marketing and product teams. and like especially on linkedin and you advocate using video content for sales so can you tell us more about this uh, how do video sales sales teams yeah there's a ton of ways to use video content for sales for actual sales teams and so part of what we do is training companies and teams how to do that and the first thing is that modern sales reps a lot of them a lot of the great ones they're not only cold calling and emailing and outreach and that kind of stuff they're also creating content what they're trying to do is is build a brand in demand they're trying to actually attract their target clients so that they don't always have to hunt people down they actually get their dream clients to hunt them down they become the hunted and so the first way is just creating video content for the feed and the you know the best feed to do that right now and is linkedin especially for b2b tiktok's rising obviously there's other platforms too but but linkedin is really really powerful especially for b2b and if you're in sales so creating video content for the feed as well as text content for the feed of course on linkedin works really really well um as you're outreaching you know we call it social selling now so not just cold calling not just emailing but there's a social selling component where you can actually send video messages in the linkedin dms so what a lot of prospects are getting hit with right now is they're getting the long paragraphs three paragraphs of hi my name is fred and this is what i do and this is our company and would you like to book a call with us and then they don't respond and then they get an automatic dm you know 3 days later hey i saw you didn't check my dm or you didn't respond back do you are you sure you don't want to book a call with us and buyers it's just falling on deaf ears. I mean nobody's paying attention to those type of messages. They're not even getting read half the time. And so um a better strategy is to go and what we teach is to go and engage, engage with people's content, engage with your target client's content. Um and then, you know, then at that point send a connection request and then once they accept, you can start sending video messages and things like that. So that's going to stand out because 99.9% of people are just not doing that. And and secondly, it gives them a more personal feel because it's literally the sales rep in the in their in their uh, DMs on video so they can see their face they get to feel for the personality they know it's personalized cuz you can't automate video DM that's specific for that prospect and yeah. the third way i would say so you got content in the feed social media feeds you've got video DMs in their inboxes and then the third way is just creating content that your sales teams can share so shareable video content that they can say hey we were talking about this problem or this challenge the other day on our call check this video out we actually made it for this exact reason this will help walk you through your decision what you're trying to do is just educate your buyers along their buyer journey as opposed to sitting on the sidelines and hoping that they one day are ready to select you yeah i think uh, when it comes to outreach especially like uh, previously people were doing it mostly on email and uh, with emails you have a scope for a long paragraph or like a better formatting but that doesn't work on linkedin right so linkedin has short messages like if you send a wall of text it's like really hard to read so either you can send audios or videos and like you also mentioned personalization is kind of the key here so like when your prospect knows that you are personalizing personalizing they are more likely to uh respond to you exactly and people will say well it takes more time to personalize your dms on linkedin it's like it does but you book more calls yeah. more qualified calls <laughs> yeah that's so it's, i mean yeah it's going to spend you're going to say, of course it's if you want better results you've got to spend more time energy or money or a combination of those you don't just get better results by doing less and spending less and doing less you know right 
So, uh, how does a business get, business get started with video marketing? Like there should be a starting point, right? Some people might think there's too much work. So what would be the prerequisites and maybe the KPIs? We can talk about that. So the first place you start with a video content strategy is you have to think about why you're creating videos in the first place. That's where I go with all my clients. So we talk about, all right, what are our business objectives and goals? What are we trying to accomplish? And at the end of the day, for 99.9% .9 of businesses and even people for individuals building their personal brand, what you're trying to do is go out there and actually create a demand for you, your business, and your service. How do you do that? By educating your potential clients and dream clients on how they should be making decisions in based on what you do, right? So if you're trying to, like for me, I'm trying to educate people on how to use video content how to develop a better strategy, how to use LinkedIn and TikTok at the same time. You know, I'm trying to educate my potential buyers in the feeds with video content and even on my website to a certain extent. And so what that does is that's actually joining the buyer. You're actually now holding hands with the buyer, walking through the buyer journey process that they're going through, as opposed to sitting on the sidelines and cold calling, emailing, creating, you know, doing lead, lead demand and hoping that they select you because, you know, you've, you've been the person there. That's how you get commoditized and that's how you, you know, end up in a price war and that kind of stuff. We want to be part of the buyer's journey. So we start there with that strategy of just, that's what, that's what we're looking to accomplish. Then we say, all right, well, based on that, what are our clients project? What are their problems? What are their challenges? What do our clients struggle with? And how can we go and answer that, those questions, right? They have questions and we have answers as a subject matter expertise. So we need to go out there and share our unique perspective, our take on what's happening in the industry our solutions, our, our value that we're going to add, we're going to educate the prospect at that point and answer those questions. And then from there, we want to think about how do we, how do we do that with video? Well, there's only two ways to create video content. There's original content. You can shoot video. You can sit down and say, I'm going to shoot three to five videos a week. I'm going to block off this period of time. I'm going to create the content and that's going to be my video for the next week to whatever it is. The second way to create video is repurposing content. And that's one of the easiest ways to create great video content is you do exactly like what we're doing here. Yeah. You've got a live session going on, you know, and whether there's people watching or not, it doesn't really matter. There could be two people on a call. It could be me talking to a hundred people on a virtual event. Either way, I'm going to chop up these clips. We're going to get eight to 10 clips. We're going to post it on LinkedIn, TikTok, and other channels. It's going to get seen by a hundred thousand people. And so it's hard to cover the whole strategy in a short tidbit. But if I'd say that to get started on video, you want to think about the why behind it. What are you trying to do? What are you trying to accomplish? What's creating demand, educating your buyers. And then you want to think about systematically, how are you going to implement video in your day-to-day, -day, in your week-to-week -week, so that you are consistently creating content that's helpful to your prospects and you're putting it in the feed. Right, right. So while starting out with video content, what mistakes should one avoid? Or rather, I should ask you, you know, what mistakes did you commit so that we can learn from them? What mistakes did I make with video content? In the you beginning? made earlier. Yeah, yeah, at the beginning, yeah. Yeah, I made a lot of mistakes with video content. I mean, I would say first and foremost, when I very when I first started making videos, I talked about a lot of different things. Like I talked about what I was excited about that day, what I thought was hot topic, what, you know, what things that were interesting to me on a personal level. And I'm not saying you can't weave those things in there because I think that's important to showcase and connect with humans as human beings. You need to connect with people. And so it's not like you never want to share personal stories and that kind of stuff. You do strategically. But if you talk about everything, if you talk about 10 to 20 to 30 different topics, the problem is you're not standing out as a subject matter expertise in your area, and you're not really building a brand around that one thing. And so people see like Gary Vee and a lot of these people talking about yeah. a ton of different things. That's only because they spent the first decade of their career talking about one to two main core things, and then they branched out. So, you know, you have to really focus and people want to post things that like, all right, I hope this goes viral. I'll share a random video of a koala climbing up a tree. Well, that doesn't help. That doesn't help create demand for yeah. your company. No one's going to watch the video of the koala coming up the tree and being like, that person's going to help our business grow by yeah. using their service. Like they're just going to like the video and move on. And so trying to go viral is a terrible strategy. Trying to post content just on whatever you feel like posting that day is a terrible strategy. You need to be focused. You need to figure out what are your goals and interests or what are your what are your business objectives? And then how do you create a demand for your expertise in the marketplace? And so again, that's educating your prospects. That's edutaining your prospects. That's inspiring your prospects with video content in the feed daily. So wonderful. Ed edutaining, right? You use the word edutaining. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. 
Great. Yeah, I think uh, on LinkedIn, uh, the quality of content, I think this is going down. <laughs> like uh, more people, like you said, are trying to get viral instead of reaching out to the customers and standing out in front of them. Like the goal, because how because of how the algorithm works so based on likes and how if you like, it goes to other people's feeds. I think people are kind of abusing the system to get likes and it's now like all not everything but some of it is going on facebook territory i think like some of the yeah. posts definitely yeah i mean that's why going viral is a terrible strategy because like <laughs> i could create funny video very entertaining videos and i could post five to ten a week that i know will get very high traction in terms of engagement comments that kind of stuff but doing that i would sacrifice the brand that i'm building right i would not be creating a demand for my specific niche in my business i would not help my business grow dramatically the way i am doing now with my content where it's more focused on our industry and our niche so y- people can do whatever they want but at the end of the day you got to go back to your business objectives are you trying to create a brand and demand and grow your business from content or are you trying to be a viral one hit wonder and get as many likes as you possibly can because there's there are two different strategies right 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 and speaking you know more of building brands you recently started your own podcast called brand in demand so yeah. uh, so it's very very interesting because you know your content creating machine is largely primarily focused on videos how are you going to incorporate you know a podcast centric oh sorry audio centric podcast let's say can you tell us more about your podcast and how you going to incorporate yeah so what's funny about our our podcast is it's actually a video podcast first okay. so actually when we create the podcast it's a live event So I've got other people there that are in our community, right? And so our community right now happens to be recruitment business owners. So people that are in the recruiting and talent space, they own a business or an executive. Uh, we invite them in our kind of private community. And then we do weekly live calls that are half an hour each. And so this is one of the best strategies for content, for video content right now. Like it, out of anything, this is one of the best. And it's so easy. Anyone can do it. And so we do those live calls once a week with our private community. Maybe there's three people, maybe there's 10, maybe there's 20, whatever it might be. It doesn't really matter. I take the audio, I've got the Getty mic right here. I take the audio from the live event and we do 20 minutes of me talking about a topic that is very interesting and relevant to my target clients. So it could be how to create a video strategy, how to build a video content machine. It could be, you know, how to really create a brand in demand, whatever it might be. We'll talk about, I'll talk about that for 20 minutes and then I'll leave 10 minutes for Q&A so that they can ask questions. And so that's great for me because then they're asking questions just like you guys are. Well, these are all questions that my potential clients have anyways. So I yeah. answer them. And then what we do with the video footage is we chop the video footage into eight to 10 clips that'll get seen by 100,000 people because we're posting on multiple different platforms and we're curating the content and creating the content for the content or for the platform specifically. And so we actually take that live video call. It's a community, it's a live event. it's an audio podcast and it's a ton of video content that we can now post on different platforms mm-hmm. that's the most efficient way to create video in 2022 wonderful mm-hmm. so uh, we see that you are highly active on, with videos on linkedin and uh, you do get a decent amount of uh, traction on each video post like i have checked them out and most have a good amount of likes so like uh, can you share some tips for uh, getting consistent performance on linkedin how do you uh keep that in track well the first thing you know you said consistent performance and that's exactly right you can't do it without consistency so like a lot of people create a few videos or 10 or 15 or 20 videos and then they look at my videos and they're like well how are you every time you post a video i feel like it performs pretty well and i'm like i've been at this consistently every single week posting videos on linkedin and now tiktok for almost three years straight right so never really i mean i've taken a few days off here and there but not much. I've been very consistent and then I put a lot of time, effort and money into my video content. And so I've invested in it. I've, I've worked on my craft. I've gotten better. I've invested more in editing and things like that. So y- consistency is a, is a huge factor. The other the second thing I'll say and equally as important because it's kind of like quantity is the consistency. You've got to post consistently every single week. And then the other part is quality. You have to make quality videos. And I don't mean they've got to be the most well-edited videos or highly produced videos because a lot of my videos are just me on my recording on my cell phone, right? And yeah. having some simple edits done and I'll do TikTok videos and that kind of stuff. So, it doesn't have to be the best edited video ever, but it's got to be quality in terms of like the message has to be good for your audience. So again, going back to the business objectives, are we trying to build a brand in demand and attract dream clients to us? If that's the case, yes. 
then we want to create content that helps educate that buyer or edutains that buyer or inspires that buyer throughout their buyer journey. We want them to look at our content and go, you know, I've been, and this literally happens to me on a daily basis. Alex, I've been watching your videos the last three months. You have taught me more about video content and more about LinkedIn than I've learned from three courses that I took over the last six months. How do we work together? Let's book together a call. Our team needs what you have to offer. And so sometimes they're watching our videos for three, six, 12 months. Other times they've seen a couple of videos and that was enough for them to book a call. But the, the key to making your video content into a 24 seven sales rep for your business is you have video not only in the feeds, but then they go to your LinkedIn profile. Then they go to your TikTok profile. They have opportunities to consume other videos, not only from you, but from your clients. And they're talking about the results that they've got from working with you. And so I could be sleeping, could be you know, 11, 12 at night. I'm sleeping, a potential client in a different time zone is going through my videos. They saw a video on the feed. They went to my website. They went to my other channels. They went to my TikTok. They went to my YouTube. And now they're on my website, checking more things out, looking at testimonials, booking a call with me. I wake up, I've got a booked call with a prospect. I look them, on link, I look them up on LinkedIn. They're, they fit my target demographic because they filled out the form on Calendly. So I kind of screen people out based on that. I wake up the next day with, with a book call and I go on the meeting and there's a high chance that we're going to close that client because they're 90% of the way qualified. Right, right, right. But, you know, the next natural question, and of course you are one of the, you know, front running video content evangelists. How do you stand out? Because a lot of people have started to, you know, create. And of course, just like we know earlier discussed, they are having some issues earlier, like unfocused content and all. But still, a lot of people want to learn from you. How are you standing out? Because you're clearly, you know, uh, reaching out to a lot of people's timelines. They are looking at your content, getting inspired. So what's the secret? There's two ways to stand out with video content. The first way, like if you want to stand out with video content, there's really two ways. The first way is through your message. So you've got a unique perspective and, and a lot of people get hung up on this with this one here. Yeah. Like people don't yeah. think that their perspective is unique or what they have to share is valuable enough. And it is. You just have to think about, all right, what industry are you in? What's your expertise? And what are you passionate about? What do you love talking about? And what's your unique spin that you have on that? You think about it a little differently than everyone else in your industry, your competitors, other people that do the same thing that you. So you've got to share that unique perspective in stories in the message of your content. And if you do that alone, that's going to help you stand out versus everyone else because your unique perspective, your stories are unique to you. If I share a story and I just did this less than two weeks ago, I shared a story about how I used to acquire customers and how I do today. And I've shared client success stories and things of that nature. No one can, that, that's unique to me. No yeah. one else has that. They may have a similar story, but it's not the same story. So that's one is you stand out by sharing your unique perspective and your unique stories that help educate that buyer and inspire the, the buyer along their journey. The second way is delivery. And you can take this and run with it as far as you want to go. Like the way you deliver your message. So that could be, um, you know, how you shoot your videos. It could be how you have your videos edited. It could be, do you do a creative video or you do a skit with two people talking back and forth? You know, I, I do a lot of those, right? You can really get creative with how you deliver your message, but you don't necessarily, it, it's more about the core message first. Like the message has to be really good. And then how you deliver it, you could deliver it 50,000 different ways. I could take what I just said, the, the concept of, hey, if you want to stand out on video, if you want to stand out with video content, there's two ways to do it. I could take that concept, that subject. I could write a text post. I could write 20 text posts on it, just phrase it different ways. Some tell, telling stories, some are just tips and action items. I could do 20 or 30 different videos. I could just shoot it in different ways. I could do one that's a skit. I could do one that's me talking in front of the camera. I could take one clip from a live event like this. And so that's how you take kind of the same message and you distribute it to a hundred different ways, pieces of content. So you have uh, talked about uh, creating videos on the go, right? Like you have said that you take out your phone and you just record and that's good to go. Like, but for uh, like for most of your videos that uh, you already had some ideas about or you want to create a good quality video. So can you tell us, uh, can you provide us a breakdown of the creative process behind this? And like if a small business is watching this episode, what would the process for them look like? I'm not talking yes. about big companies that have huge setups and everything. Yeah, so this is my process to how I create skit videos, edutainment videos as we call them, right? So it's, it's fusing educational content with an entertaining story or, or skit. 
I, the first thing I do is I think about what is the core message that I want to get across to my audience? Because there's a difference between entertainment and edutainment. One actually educates and inspires the potential buyer and one just purely entertains. I want to edutain. So to do that, I need to figure out what's the core message or uh, what's the core subject that I want to talk about and, and how do I want to shift the perspective of the people consuming the video? Do I want to teach them something? Do I want to motivate them? Like, what do I want to do with them emotionally too? And so I think about that. So let's just say like, we just did the, the video for the top gun of social media and we just posted that today and it's doing really well yeah, and, yeah. and a lot of, a lot so of great I, feedback on it. It's really yeah. cool. So, so with that video, let's just take that video for an example. I would think of the theme or the message behind the video. And so I'm like, all right, with, with a video like that, I'll say, all right, I want to, maybe I want to teach people how to the value of actually building a brand in demand versus always having to go out and try to hunt down customers. I want to try to get my customers to come to me. Cool. I've got the concept, right? That's the message that I want to convey and teach my audience about and edutain them with. Second, now I got to think about how do I deliver that in a really creative way that they can smile, they can laugh, they can have fun as they consume that valuable message. And so then for me, it's just taking, it could be a movie I saw, it could be a Netflix show I watched, it could be something I read about, it could be another video that I saw. I'm just looking for ideas in the world that I see. Like we saw the movie Top Gun three weeks ago and I was like, man, how cool would it be to do like a social media spinoff on that? And so like, I kind of got the idea of what to talk about was floating through my mind just from talking to prospects and getting ideas from potential customers and customers. And then I thought, man, the Top Gun thing would be cool to kind of fuse that story together then at that point, once I have kind of what to talk about and then the, the story behind it, then I'll go through and write out the script. And then from there, it's kind of getting a rough draft script. I'll go back, I'll refine it, make a final draft. And then I actually start recording the videos. And then once the videos are done, they're trimmed up and then they're sent to editing. And then once they come back from editing, then they're ready to post. Yeah, I think that's it's the process. Simple, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not for everyone, right? Like it's, I mean, I think anyone could do it. But it definitely takes a lot of time and it definitely takes a lot of commitment. And I think it's got to be something that if you're going to do it long term, you got to kind of have a, a, a certain level of love for it and desire yeah. to do it. And I think it helps to yeah. be naturally good at it, too. Wonderful. Yeah, but you are also rewarded highly, right? Like social media platforms, they love videos. <laughs> so the time is worth it, kind of. Yeah, that's I mean, I've always believed that I've always spent you know, a lot of time, money and effort into my videos. And I do that. I know it takes longer. I know I spend more time. I know I spend more money on my videos, but it pays off. It's worth it because the brand that I've built in the video marketing, the video content space is it's ahead of pretty much anyone else that's out there. And so that's what I always wanted to do day one. I was like, I want to be top 1%. I want to be the Tesla of video creation. You know, I want to be the, the Apple, the Apple of video content. You know, I wasn't, there's, there's different tiers you can go down and there's no wrong or right way to do it, but we just always wanted to be the top tier. And that requires a lot of dedication to your craft that requires spending a lot of money to innovate and inspire and create new things. And so we've always, we've always went down that path. Wonderful. Wonderful. Now, speaking of skeptics, you know, there are always going to be skeptics. Even Tesla has, you know, a lot of still. So, oh, oh, yeah. A lot of them. yeah. So a lot of founders, you know, who are not very regular on LinkedIn on posting, they think that, you know, LinkedIn influencers just post selfies and videos for getting followers and a strategy like that, you know, can't really help their business in a real sense. So what do you say to them? And first of all, let me ask you this. Do you consider yourself a LinkedIn influencer, first of all? And then how do you address this, you know, concern of these people? Do I consider myself a LinkedIn influencer? I don't really know that I like think about that. You know, I think that maybe some people would say that about me, but I really don't think about like, am I an influence? You know, I just think, look, am I, am I, am I trying to inspire people and help people and impact people? Yes, for yeah. sure. So if you want to call that a LinkedIn influencer, I'm okay with that. Yeah. I think it gets a bad rap because of a lot of the influencer. <laughs> yeah. Talk that's why I asked problem. you first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get it. I, I no, I totally understand it. I totally get it. I see, I see both sides. But I think in terms of what would I say to somebody that was like skeptical of LinkedIn or video content, I wouldn't say anything to them. I, I would just say like, ha, like go, go about your way and do things how you think that you need to do them. And, you know, if I run into somebody that's like, I don't believe in video content, I don't believe in LinkedIn, I don't, I think it's all a big gimmick, then okay, you know, I'll see you in three years, I'll see you in five years, you know, let's see how your business is doing when you have zero content and you've done nothing to build a brand and demand. I mean, the evidence is out there. If you look at the data, you can look at big, big, big name examples like what Elon Musk and Steve Jobs and Gary Vaynerchuk. I mean, there's The Rock, 
Dwayne yeah. Johnson. He's yeah. sold freaking billions of stuff worth of stuff through his personal brand, through video content. So, I mean, there's, there's case studies, like you would never, you could study case studies the rest of your life on video content and social media, and you would never get through half of them. So that's out there. There's also facts like from 2018 to 2022, people have consumed double the amount of online videos. Right. So the amount of online video consumption has went up double since from 2018 to 2022. And that's, I think, 10 hours per week that we consumed in 2018, obviously you know, prior to COVID. Yep. And now it's yep. it's almost 20 hours per week. So, you know, and there's, uh, there's platforms like TikTok and Instagram Reels and YouTube Shorts and LinkedIn's getting heavier with video. Video is literally popping up everywhere. More and more human beings are consuming it. If you look at the data behind the buyers, more people are buying with video. They're getting educated through video before they actually purchase. And so it has, there, there's so many different things that if I ran into someone that was like denied the power of video and content and social media, I, I would just say, all right, you know, you can believe what you want to believe, but I know the reality of what's happening and um, they're going to miss out on a big opportunity if they don't take advantage of it. Right. Yeah, you mentioned the rock. So I just wanted to uh, talk about since you mentioned earlier that you take out the phone and you take videos. I think the rock yeah. does something like that. He yeah. He's always in the gym and yeah. he's posting videos directly from the gym. And, you know, he's a great example of someone that people might look at and go, well, the yeah. rock post about anything. He's yeah. in the gym. He's making this tequila drinks like. But he only can do that now because he built a brand right, in demand. Okay. He, 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 what did he focus on for the first decade or whatever it was? Wrestling. Like yeah. that was his niche. He dedicated yeah. his life, his career. He perfected it. And then he got to a point where he started doing movies and other things. And now he's so big of a celebrity that he can talk about anything. People are just interested yeah. in him as a person. Yeah. So that's right. what happens when you get really good at something and you perfect your craft and you stay in your lane and you get so good at it over the period of you know years time that you become a person of interest. And yeah. I think that's what a lot of people miss is they see the person of interest now. They didn't see what they were years back yeah. when they were in their lane focused on their craft. Right, right. And I, and I, if I, you know, speak, you know, a little further about, you know, the skeptics and all, apart from the skeptics, there are people who, you know, deliberately spread misinformation to get some likes. Just the other yeah. day, I mean, in, there was someone who was saying that video content doesn't work and all. So do you also, you know, uh, how do you counter that? Because people are just, you know, speaking with so, so much confidence about these. Yeah. these <laughs> you know, half of the, you know, I'd say 90% of the people that say video content doesn't work are not posting video content yeah. and have never <laughs> posted video content consistently. So it's funny. They'll be like, oh, Alex, I found that video content is not as impactful on LinkedIn. And I'm like, really, John, I went to your page and you've posted zero videos in the last six months. So how do you know? Like, and they're like, oh, well, I've got clients. I've got these people. I look at different videos. You know, look, you, I am someone that lives it, right? And I help my clients implement the same thing. I've posted more video content, more styles of video content than I think any other creator on LinkedIn, honestly. Yeah. And so I, I've lived it. I don't talk about things that I, I haven't lived. You're not going to hear me talk about how to, you know, write a book or how to like, oh, you know, yeah. design a website right now. Like I don't talk about stuff that I don't know and haven't lived. I just live this video content world. And so I've got a lot of proof and data points and success stories to back it up. Wonderful. So Alex, we are, you know, at the, right at the end of the interview, we have a couple of rituals that we do with our guests. So uh, first of all, oh. as a star video content creator and Indian trainer, what are you reading nowadays? And what would you like to suggest some books to our audience or some videos to watch? Anything that you would like to, you know? Or audience to refer to? I actually do not read books. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. I don't. So, you know, I, I really don't like, I haven't read a book in a long, long time. Um, I'm just reading is not my thing. Like I do listen to, I'll listen to some YouTube video, like listen to them audio when I'm driving or a podcast. Like I was recently listened to entrepreneurs on fire, kind of an interesting podcast where they invite entrepreneurs on there that are like crushing it in their space. And they just pick their brains and try to get all the wisdom from there in like a 20, 30 minute segment. Um, what else have I consumed anything else recently? Yeah, I, I don't do a ton of of, uh, of that type of stuff and reading. Yeah. So I want to do more of it, but yeah. Okay, yep. so the next thing, would you like to nominate anyone for our show so that we can continue to you know have wonderful guests on our show? Man, I think a good person would be uh, Marcus Sheridan. If you've ever talked to him or interacted with him on LinkedIn, he might be, he might be a little tougher to get right now. I think he's pretty busy, but 
Marcus Sheridan is a legend in his space. And he's, he's, I mean, he's been all over the place in terms of like industries and clients. And uh, he started off in the pool industry and built his business. I mean, took it from ground zero to multi-million dollar business um, through content, through answering his clients' questions. Right. He's got a best-selling book. And so, yeah, he'd be, if you can get him on here, it'd be great. Alex Sheridan, thank you so much for your time. You've been very generous. And uh, we hope that you continue to, you know, crush on LinkedIn. And uh, of course, we are all following you. We are all learning from you. Thank you so much for creating such great content on, you know, such a regular basis. So anything that you'd like to say now, now's the time. Uh, I just appreciate you guys. I appreciate all the supporters and people that watch the videos and like and comment. And it means a lot and allows me to keep doing what I love to do. So I appreciate all the support. Thank you. And thanks to our audience for sticking with us. We'll see you in the next episode. Till then, stay safe. Thank you.